pictures of some animals and birds are given in the following chart. How will you tell your friend where the elephant is? Making use of the numbered rows and columns, you can tell that the elephant is in the third row and fourth column. In this way, you can locate the position of the other animals too. We can locate the position of any place on earth in the same way. In order to do that, we will have to consider horizontal and vertical lines on the earth's surface. Because of the vastness of the earth's surface, we cannot actually draw these lines. They have only been imagined. How are these imaginary lines determined? How can we locate a place with the help of these lines? We will learn about it in this chapter. Let us study about parallels of latitude on the globe. Observe the figure. A ball is placed near a scale. Pencils fixed at different levels on the scale touch the ball's surface in such a way that when the ball is rotated, lines appear on its surface. When the ball completes one rotation, these lines also make complete circles. In this way, many circles can be drawn on its surface. The circle formed at the middle of the ball is the biggest circle. The circles that form above and below it are smaller and smaller. All these circles are actually horizontal lines that run right across the surface of the ball. Such imaginary circular lines on the Earth's surface are known as parallels because they are all parallel to one another. The longest parallel is known as the equator and the smallest, which is like a point, is known as the pole. The equator is at an equal distance from the two poles. The equator is taken to be at zero degree latitude. The other parallels lie to its north and south. The equator divides the earth into two equal parts, the northern and the southern hemispheres. The distance of a parallel from the equator is given in degrees. This distance is known as latitude. As the parallels of latitude are on both the sides of the equator, when we mention them, it is necessary to mention their direction. Instead of just saying latitude 25 degrees, we say 25 degrees north or 25 degrees south. The latitudes of the poles are also given as 90 degrees north or 90 degrees south. The equator and the 90 plus 90, 180 parallels of latitude above and below it on the Earth's surface make a total of 181 parallels of latitude. Each parallel is at a distance of one degree from the next. Next is meridians on the globe. We need to imagine vertical lines along with the horizontal lines of latitude to locate a place on the Earth's surface. Just as the North Pole is seen as a point in this figure, so also is the South Pole. These points are used to draw the vertical lines. Observe the figure. Fix two fine nails at the two poles. Tie the two ends of a thread to these two nails so that the thread is stretched tightly between them. This thread will be seen as a vertical line. By tying many such threads, we can draw many vertical lines. These vertical lines join the two poles. They are semicircular in shape. Such semicircular lines on the earth are known as 
meridians. They all have the same length. The distance between any two meridians increases as they grow from the poles towards the equator. The distance is maximum at the equator. Two meridians exactly opposite one another together form a full circle. Any meridian should be considered as zero degree meridians as all of them are of the same length. However, the meridian that passes through Greenwich, a town in United Kingdom, is considered to be zero degree meridian. This is known as the prime meridian. The prime meridian and the 180 degree meridian are exactly opposite one another. Together, they form a full circle. This divides the Earth's sphere into two equal parts, the Western and Eastern hemispheres. To the east and west of the prime meridian, there are 180 meridians. Each meridian is at a distance of one degree from the next. The meridians to the east and west of the prime meridian are numbered from 1 to 179. Thus, there are 180 plus 180, 360 meridians on the Earth's surface. Their distance from the prime meridian is given in degrees. This distance is known as longitude. When giving the longitude of a place, east or west is written after the longitude to show whether the place is to the east or west of Greenwich. The parallels of latitude and the meridians or lines of longitude are both imaginary lines. We can make use of the parallels and meridians to locate any place on the Earth's surface on the map or the globe. Graticule. You must be familiar with the globe. There are many vertical and horizontal lines on it. These lines are actually a network of parallels and meridians. This network is called a graticule. Great circles. The equator and any two meridians opposite each other can each divide the earth into two equal parts. The length of the equator or that of two opposite meridians joined together is each equal to the circumference of the earth. Many circles equal to the circumference can be drawn on the earth's surface. Such circles divide the earth into two equal parts. As these are the biggest circles on the earth, they are known as great circles. Due to the rays of the sun, half of the earth is lighted. The other half is in darkness. The line that separates the lighted part from the part that is in darkness is known as the circle of illumination. It is also a great circle.